great. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm Congressman Ted Deutsch. I represent Florida's 22nd Congressional District. Uh, and I am joined here so far by uh, my colleague, Congressman Charlie Chris, uh, and Daniel Richter of the Citizens Climate Lobby, and uh, Greg Burleson, uh, uh, and Congressman Delaney is on his way. Uh, we're, we're thankful also to have the, the uh, strong support of Francis Rooney, Congressman Rooney, Congressman Fitzpatrick, two of our Republican colleagues. Unfortunately, due to uh, some scheduling conflicts, they're unable to make it this morning, but I'll have a statement that I'll read from Congressman Rooney. Uh, we're here this morning to talk about the introduction of the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. It is the product of a lot of hard work by many people and groups, both on the Hill and off, a lot of advocacy by the good people behind us and all over the country. It is the product of rigorous negotiations between Democrats and Republicans, liberal groups, conservative groups, environmental groups, and business groups. And the goal was to craft a climate proposal that will be a, a huge leap forward in the way America responds to climate change. Now, we already know the very real and immediate impact that climate change is having. Sea level rise affecting the coast, clean water sources, shorter winters, hurting seasonal tourism in the north and the mountain west, intensified hurricanes and storms and other natural disasters, and drier spells leading to worse wildfires and harsher droughts. This is not some dystopian science fiction. This is real. These are harsh facts, and they are occurring today. Don't take my word for it. The Trump administration's national climate assessment warned of the same types of disasters that have already cost the United States more than $400 billion just since 2015. And then there's the report that came out just yesterday from the UN Environment Program showing that greenhouse gas emissions hit a record high in 2017 and, uh, and that we're going to be in severe trouble limiting global warming to two degrees Celsius. And of course, there, those follow the two, the, those two follow the major UN study from October that laid out the urgent changes that are needed before 2030 to get our world on track to limit global warming. Simply put, the status quo is not sustainable. It's not survivable. If we don't act now, we're nearing a point of no return when it comes to our environment, when it comes to our health, when it comes to our economy. This carbon fee bill is projected to reduce carbon pollution in our country by 45% in 12 years, 90% reduction target by 2050. And according to an independent study by a Columbia University professor, this plan may actually cause emissions to fall below those targets. We put a price on pollution. That's what this bill does. Starting at $15 per metric ton of, of CO2e, and we increase that price $10 every year. Of the fees collected, 100% of the net revenue will go back to the American people. A plan that the Treasury Congress on reimposing uh, all environmental regulations. Now, we know this bill won't solve all of our problems, and I'm ready, we stand ready to work with our Democratic and Republican colleagues to consider other parts of the climate change challenge, like encouraging research and development of renewable energy options, uh, more on energy efficiency, and so many other issues that, that we can tackle. This is a complex and difficult challenge but we cannot be the generation that allows it to become a runaway train. We've got to put the brakes on climate change. And with the introduction of this bill, we're taking a step, a significant step, to show our colleagues and the country that there is a bipartisan 
solution to climate change that faces the risks to our health, our environment, and our economy head on, and that puts a price on pollution to end our reliance on carbon. Uh, with that, I, uh, I'm proud to turn this over to uh, my fellow Floridian and good friend, Dr. Charlie Chris. Good morning. Um, I'm very proud to be here today. Um, as, as my colleague Ted mentioned, we're both Floridians, so we come to this pretty easily. Uh, we probably are from the state that is the most susceptible to rising sea level. I don't think there's any question about that. That's why this bill is so important, uh, and action is necessary. Um, but it's necessary not only for Florida and America, but for the world, uh, for us to take this bold step, this bipartisan step. Uh, so I want to uh, thank in particular our colleagues, uh, Representative Rooney, uh, as well as Representative Fitzpatrick from Pennsylvania, uh, two Republicans on the bill, uh, who are helping us in this effort. Reducing our carbon dependency is key to winning the fight against climate change. That's what this is all about. Uh, this was clear for more than 10 years ago after hosting Florida's first National Climate Change Summit uh, as governor of Florida. Uh, we worked to limit carbon emissions uh, during that period. Recent climate reports, as Ted referred to, uh, the Trump administration's own report, uh, lends urgency to this issue at this point in time. Continued inaction would be a catastrophic event for our environment, our economy, and our people's health. We are taking a historic step with the introduction of this bipartisan legislation. Congress must act. The urgency of this crisis demands it. Uh, I want to turn it back over to my, my dear friend and my wonderful colleague uh, from Florida, Ted Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before, uh, before turning it over to Daniel Richter, the Vice President of Government Affairs for the Citizens Climate Lobby, I'd like to share a, a statement that Congressman Francis Rooney uh, had asked us to read for him. And this is from Congressman Rooney. To let the free market price uh, out, to let the free market price out coal, we should consider value pricing carbon. A revenue neutral carbon fee is an efficient market driven incentive to move toward natural gas and away from coal and to support emerging alternate sources of energy. Uh, grateful to Congressman Rooney and with that, uh, I'd like to turn this over to Daniel Richter. Uh, there are so many groups who have been so involved uh, in getting to this point, uh, but the Citizens Climate Lobby, with the emphasis on the citizens who, in chapters all across the country, went out to talk to their elected officials, uh, speak out about the importance of moving forward to, to address climate change. Uh, this group of citizen activists really has helped to move the needle. I'm grateful to all of them. Uh, and I will turn it over to Dan. Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. This policy comes as a result of these members really listening to their constituents and responding to their concerns. Citizens Climate Lobby has over 100,000 supporters and twice a year hundreds of them travel to here to Washington DC to speak with their members of Congress face to face. Many of those volunteers live in these sponsors districts. They're in Florida, in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and all across the country. They come into their representatives' offices as neighbors, as local business owners, as parents, as grandparents. They've expressed their concern about sea level rise flooding their streets, about poor air quality making their kids' asthma worse, about all the evidence they see right there at home that climate is changing and putting them and their loved ones in harm's way and they ask their representatives to act. From the local to the global level, climate change is an urgent problem. Last week's National Climate Assessment told us yet again that climate change is real, scientists agree that humans are causing it, 
and that we have to act. Earlier this fall, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change put out its latest report saying the same thing. That report specifically focused on a price on carbon pollution as a way forward. Today, these five members are heeding that call and introducing the broad, effective climate legislation we need. The Energy Innovation and Carbon and Dividend Act shows that these legislators agree that climate change is bigger and more important than party politics. Climate change can and should be a bridge, not a wedge, between the two parties. This challenge is so big that we must work together to solve it. These Republican and Democratic members of Congress have shown us the best of what our democracy can be, working together on issues that face all Americans. We're grateful for their leadership and for their commitment to addressing climate change. Thank you. And uh, it's now my honor to introduce Greg Bertelson, who is the Senior Vice President of, of the Climate Change. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good thanks morning. for joining us today. My name is Greg Burleson, and I am the Senior Vice President of the Climate Leadership Council. The council was founded in collaboration with business, opinion, and environmental leaders to promote a conservative-inspired carbon dividends framework as the most cost-effective, equitable, and politically viable climate solution. The Bipartisan Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act is an encouraging and important step towards a climate breakthrough. Representatives Deutsch, Christ, Rooney, Delaney, and Fitzpatrick deserve considerable praise, not only for introducing this important policy, but also for their willingness to work across the aisle, offering the first bipartisan carbon pricing bill in Congress in nearly a decade. Also, Also deserving acknowledgement are the Citizens Climate Lobby and its thousands, hundreds of thousands, of volunteers who were a driving force behind this effort. A carbon fee paired with regulatory simplification would send a powerful price signal while providing much needed policy certainty for businesses. This will unlock a wave of American innovation and investment, position U.S. manufacturers and businesses as the world's leaders the next generation of clean energy technologies and deliver a stronger, more resilient, lower carbon economy, all while shrinking the size of government. Returning all of the revenue from the, free, the fee directly to the American households is not only the most equitable approach, but also the most popular. Recent polling indicates voters support the carbon dividends framework by a margin of 2.5 to 1 with strong support among Democratic, Republican, and independent voters. And perhaps unsurprisingly, voters overwhelmingly prefer carbon dividends over the other uses of carbon fee revenue. Members of Congress on both sides of the aisle are quickly realizing that the carbon dividends approach is not only just good policy, but it's also good politics. This legislation proves that a carbon dividends framework can attract backing from lawmakers on all sides. The Council commends the Congressmen for their strong leadership in taking major steps forward in addressing the climate challenge. While there are some important differences between the Council's Baker-Schultz plan and the EICD Act, we agree that carbon dividends, the Carbon Dividends Plan is the most efficient way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions at the required scale and speed and is the best solution for the environment and the economy. Americans want both parties to work together to solve big issues like climate change, and in that vein, once again, we thank Representatives Deutsch, Christ, Rooney, Delaney, and Fitzpatrick for their cooperation and leadership and for setting the stage for a bipartisan solution on climate in the 116th Congress. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much. Congressman uh, Delaney, just before I open it up for questions, uh, I would just uh, make this observation. In South Florida, uh, where I come from and just as true on the west coast of Florida and so many other places, climate change is not a political issue. Uh, it is understood by business leaders and local government officials back home uh, 
where climate, the impacts of climate change are being felt right now. It is understood that we need to work together to come up with a bipartisan solution to address this most urgent threat that we face. Our hope is with the introduction of this legislation that Congress can show that it understands that as well. And uh, with that, I'm happy to open up for questions. Yeah. Yeah, Nick Sobchak with ENE News. Um, so this obviously has relatively little chance of passing in this Congress. Um, so what's, what's the strategy introducing it now and what's sort of the, the outlook looking ahead to, to the next Congress next year? Uh, well, we thought it was important to introduce this now to, to show that as we prepare to head into uh, what will be a more bipartisan Congress with the Democratic House and the Republican Senate, uh, that there is a bipartisan way forward on this issue. It's the only way that we can get anything done. People understand that. Uh, I think from, from all of the members of the Citizens Climate Lobby, all the activists who have come to see us, uh, they want action. So there is no reason to wait until the new Congress. We wanted to show right now that we can come together and act in a positive way uh, to seriously address climate change in that bipartisan way for the first time in quite a while. I couldn't have said it any better than Ted already did, but uh, he's right. I mean, we're going to have a Democratic House and a Republican Senate. It doesn't get much more bipartisan than that, and uh, so I think the prospects are very good. Um, just looking at the co-sponsors of this legislation itself, uh, it's Republican and Democratic members too, and so I, I think that we have a great opportunity, and it, it's smart, I think, to go ahead and set the groundwork now instead of waiting until the next Congress. Uh, there's. Uh, no need to wait to do what's right. Thank you. Woo! 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 Voters in Washington State rejected a carbon tax uh, earlier this month. The state was controlled by all Democrats. How is this proposal different, and how are you going to deal with the political challenges on both sides where you have folks like the president making their comments uh, yesterday? Well, there, there are always political challenges. There are political challenges in, in bringing Republicans and Democrats together on so many issues. Uh, but the, in, with this piece of legislation, the, the fact that 100% uh, uh, of the, the net revenue will go back to American families uh, is an important piece of this. Uh, the, the understanding that we can both impose a carbon fee to help, uh, to help change the behavior of polluters while at the same time uh, addressing the regulatory framework uh, to provide some, some certainty for them uh, and the estimates that show the significant impact that this is going to have in reducing carbon output uh, will set the stage for a national debate. I, I'm, I don't know about the voters of Washington State. I don't know how that was discussed or, what, or frankly um, uh, how they addressed it and I'm not so concerned about that. With this piece of legislation we have the opportunity to start a very broad, very important, and most importantly, bipartisan conversation about a way forward to address climate change, an issue that affects everyone in every part of this country. starting out with Republican support. Of course, the United States Congress is very different than Washington State, but already we're starting off with something that uh, ultimately the, the activists who worked very hard in, in Washington State were not able to achieve. All right, great. Yes. Have you had any sort of conversations with the incoming chairman of the relevant committees, Ways and Means, about bringing this legislation up for committee hearings next year so far? The, uh, the the committees, obviously, tackling the issue of climate change uh, is urgent, not just for the, the those of us who introduced this bill, but it's certainly urgent for Congress and for the, the new leadership of the House committees, which I can speak to, and they're looking at all of the various ways to, to tackle it. Uh, we wanted to get this out here now, as, uh, as Congressman Chris said, so that we could show that there is bipartisan support for an effort like this. And then, be, and then make sure that this is part of what will be a really important conversation about the agenda that will take place over the coming weeks heading into January. 